the different channels here. And how are you, Kathy? AMG. Oh, whoa. Darn. Drop the phone. Okay, so hold on. Not uh, drop the iPad. One thing at a time here. Can't panic. Hold on just a second as I get this coordinated. Okay, so we have we have a lot to talk about, and uh, and uh, <clears throat> hope I didn't break it. Nope, not broken. We have a lot to talk about, and if you uh, haven't seen my video on the Librem Five, go watch that after the broadcast so you uh, get a sense of what's what's out there. Something new today or soon not out yet but sometime very soon we will see a new device called the Librem 5 and that's uh, that's uh, uh, on a video that I put in there hello night eyes video that I put in on YouTube a couple days ago or yeah a couple days ago so watch that it's a, a very uh, popular video apparently Okay, so who do I miss here? So Kathy's there, Twist Mint. Uh, okay, so who else did I miss? Did I miss, uh, who did I miss on Periscope here? There's Night Eyes and Lighten Up. Uh, say hello and I will uh, say hello back to you. You know, I remember anyone, anyone that comes by. Recap, we don't need a recap, we just started. There's no recap yet. Stay put. We have a lot to talk about. We have a lot to talk about. So, so what I'm going to talk about today, I've been asked a lot of questions. I've been asked a lot of questions about, uh, about phones. And uh, to just give you an example of some of the questions, somebody asked me, uh, you know, what are these hardware switches? What are the hardware switches on phones? You know, because this Librem 5 apparently has hardware switches. And what is the significance of that? Hello, Just Clementine. Uh, Angelic Heart, uh, what is the significance of that? What is the significance of uh, people saying, uh, uh, what about some other operating systems on, on my, my phone? Can I, can I uh, install Lineage OS and, and uh, any number of other variants of Android on there? What, what about those? What is the significance of that? What, what are uh, Things like, uh, I'm going to give you another example. What are these things called carrier updates? And what, why is that important or not important? And uh, what about uh, things like, uh, things like uh, you know, Stingray and how does that relate to your phone? We're going to talk about all that tonight. So it's going to be very, very informative. And hopefully after tonight, you'll, you'll understand why Snowden doesn't carry a phone. Hello, Mama Goo. So... Snowden doesn't carry a phone, and uh, and when you start to understand, you know what's actually in the phone, then you start to understand why I am very very concerned about it. Okay, now before I do that, I'm gonna do a demo of something else. Before I talk about cell phones, I'm gonna do a demo. I'm gonna repeat this demo multiple times tonight. Okay, I'm gonna do this demo multiple times tonight, and what I have here is a uh, prototype, a running prototype of security system. Uh, it's a running prototype of a security system. This is uh, uh, not wired, it's on Wi-Fi. And uh, it's gonna be small. It's, I, I don't expect it to be very big when it's packaged because we just have to fit all the electronics into a small device. But I'm gonna demonstrate what this does. And, uh, and uh, I expect this will be uh, ready for the holiday season. Uh, if you're, I, I want to get some reactions, though. You know, I want to get some reactions to this to see if it's uh, cool, not cool, boring, screwed up, or whatever it is. Okay, so uh, there's some LED lights in there. I don't know if you can see the LED lights because it's kind of bright. Uh, yeah, there's some LED lights in there. Have a little savvy. Okay, so this is an alarm system. <clears throat> This is an alarm system. This is one of the things I'm developing together with a camera. Camera, uh, 
the camera's running now, and uh, we're just uh, finishing up the case. And uh, here's an example of the security system with the, that's some of the camera stuff on there. So you can see, uh, you know, that's what it looks like on my phone. And so that's the, uh, that's the uh, camera side. This is not the camera, this is the, uh, the actual uh, separate alarm system. Okay, now I'm gonna turn this on. Again, we're gonna talk about, for those of you who just came in, we are going to talk about phones and the smartphone issues. We are gonna talk about that, but I'm gonna be doing this running demonstration to get some feedback from you guys for home security, yes, and watch this. Okay, all I have to do is I leave the house, I'm gonna press the button. Okay, you saw it beep. Okay, that gives me about uh, 40 seconds or so to, at, in this demo, <clears throat> 40 seconds or so to walk out. Hello, Pat's fan. Okay, so that'll, uh, it's beeping now, warning you that it's setting up. So this is your time to leave the house. Okay, so, okay, every 10 seconds is gonna beep. <clears throat> so just listen, uh, listen tight every 10 seconds. Then at some point I'm gonna have to be not move. Like now I'm not gonna move anymore. Alarm is active now. You hear that? Did you hear that? So if I move, the alarm is gonna sense me here. It doesn't sense my mouth, but if I suddenly move, okay. Nope. Alarm. Police alert. You hear that? <clears throat> so it uses uh, user radar. Okay? Uses radar. So uh, are, is our connection good here? Our Periscope connection is, uh, is fading here on mine. Okay? Uh, how, how's the connection on uh, YouTube? The connection faded on, uh, uh, yes, but it's uh, radar based. It's not, it's not infrared based. It's based on radar. Okay, did I lose the, uh, seem to have some, you know, uh, we seem to have a problem with Periscope. Uh, YouTube is good. There seemed to be a problem with Periscope here. Uh, Periscope dropped. Why? Okay, let me uh, let me see if I can restart you. Don't don't uh, touch anything there. I will restart uh, YouTube. I mean Periscope here. Hold on. Uh, wonder what happened. Something happened to my Wi-Fi. Yeah, but uh, my computer is wired. No, 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 no. Ra radar interference. Hmm. Huh, that's a good point. Did I get radar interference? Because it is radar, and I'm right next to it. I'm right next to it. So let me just see. If, if, uh, if, you, if uh, Periscope faded away there, I will start it again. Okay, so let me, uh, let me see if I can restart. Uh, I'm going to restart uh, uh, Periscope. I'm going to restart Periscope. Hold on a second, because... Uh, and restart Periscope here. Give me just a second. I can repeat the test and then see if Periscope goes down again. Now Periscope won't start. Periscope doesn't like it. So YouTube is okay. This is simply a Periscope issue here. Let me just see if my Wi-Fi, this is my Wi-Fi causing a problem. Hold on a second. Is is YouTube okay? Everyone on YouTube here, still here? Yeah. Okay. I restarted YouTube. Because I got worried that uh, nobody was responding on YouTube and I shouldn't have done that, okay? I restarted YouTube, I, I guess I didn't have to. YouTube was running fine. YouTube was running fine, but my, uh, 
device Wi-Fi stopped here. Hold on. Everything is fading now. There's no Periscope is not running. I don't have any access to Periscope here. It won't connect to Periscope. Won't connect to Periscope. Zocked up. Okay, hold on. Okay. Periscope on. Periscope is not on. No, Periscope is not on. I'm not broadcasting to Periscope right now. I can't even connect to Periscope. Yeah, I can't connect to Periscope. Cannot connect to Periscope. It won't let me. Okay, I, I may have to ignore Periscope for a while here. So, okay, so I cannot connect to Periscope. So, so we'll try again a little later here. But uh, right now, Periscope will not connect. So, anyway. So, uh, so let me repeat this test for you to, so you see, see it again. So, let me repeat the test and see if it will get disrupted. Okay, I'm going to repeat this test here again. So, if you get this, it's going to be a smaller, smaller box. And all you need to do is plug into power. I happen to plug it into a, uh, to a speaker. Okay. I have it plugged into a speaker here. So, uh, uh, I'm able to, I'm able to, Periscope is on. What do you mean Periscope is on? I'm, I'm not on Periscope. I don't see anything in Periscope. Periscope not running on my devices. I am, I'm not able to connect to Periscope from any device. Okay, so if you're on Periscope, I can't see anything. I cannot see a thing. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try this again, this test. Okay, so this is gonna be a fairly small device. You can even hide it. It's connected to a uh, to uh, my my uh, my uh, stereo system right now for for sound, uh, but you can connect it to a Bluetooth speaker or anything if you want. You are uh, uh, yeah, I I'm not able to connect to Periscope, so. Uh, I'm, I'm glad Periscope is running, but I can't see you. Uh, n none of my devices are connecting. So I'm going to have to wait to see what, what that's all about. So I'm going to try this again. I'm going to press the button right there. Just watch the lights there. Right now, it, there's, a, there's a green light. There's a green light right now. Okay, you saw it beep. Uh, uh, you saw it beep. And the beep is uh, uh, saying that the alarm timer is going on. It's going to start. It's not connected to anything in Tyre Myers by itself. This is not echo. There's no echo here. There's no echo. There's no anything. This is just by itself. It's connected to Brax, though. <clears throat> There's no echo. I can't talk to it. Not going to listen to you. It doesn't have a microphone. Okay, so it's going it, to... Uh, when it starts saying the alarm is active, I'm going to stop moving. Which is going to happen. Alarm is active now. Okay, the alarm is active. The unit is, the red light is on. Alarm. Oh. Police alert. See, uh, even a slight, I just moved slightly like that and it got me. Okay. So now, there's no like code to just turn it off like you would in a typical security system. The reason is it doesn't really go to uh, to a um, a monitoring company. It just goes to you. So it, it, you get immediate notification on your device. Uh, in fact, I'm going to show you. Here's an example screen. This is on a computer. On, on a mobile, it's going to be smaller. And there's the uh, example of an alarm. There's the alarm event from that device. It's going to show up immediately on your alarm and on your uh, mobile. And uh, you're going to immediately see that uh, that you're gonna immediately see that there's an alert. So uh, it's so simple. So you, before you walk out of the house, just press the button right there, and uh, and uh, then it works. Okay, I, uh, Periscope is still not running for me. So I'm glad Periscope is running, but I can't see Periscope. So I don't know what to do here. So from where I am, I am not able to connect to Periscope. But this server is someplace else. This is connected to a server that I have in Florida. And this Florida server is connecting to Periscope. I'm wired. 
So this computer is allowing it, but my mobiles are connected to the app. The app's not working. Okay, the alarm's gonna go on in a second. Alarm is active now. Alarm. Police alert. Okay. <laughs> the, the voices from 2000. What device is recording you for the scope? Uh, the same one. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I'm I'm multi-streaming from my computer uh, to a multi-streaming server, my multi-streaming server, which is broadcasting on Twitch Periscope uh, and BraxMe and YouTube on one stream. So it's just one stream. It just I rebroadcast it to all. That's being done at the server. So uh, I am physically not here at my location, not connected to Periscope at all. So all of the connections, so from my server, it's connecting to Periscope. So if I am not able to connect here, it wouldn't have any impact. My server is able to connect to Periscope, but where I am, the, uh, my local, uh, uh, the local server of Periscope is not running where I am, so it's not connecting to Periscope. So there's some, there's some problems with Periscope, particularly in my area. It's, that's what it looks like. Okay, I'm not able to connect. So, uh, I'll keep talking. I'll keep talking and uh, and uh, continue the broadcast, and I won't worry about Periscope. The unfortunate thing is, I cannot see. Uh, I cannot see comments on Periscope. Neither can I see comments if uh, if Kelp shows up. So, uh, if you want to uh, talk to me on this live broadcast, since I'm not able to see the Periscope comments. Please talk on YouTube and I can see you here. So this is a device that I, that I made. Uh, we're just making the case for it. We're just making the case for it and this will be uh, uh, hopefully available, uh, available uh, you know, around uh, you know, by the holidays or right before. And uh, uh, this should be, I, I'm thinking this should be like a nine, $99 device, this thing here. 99 bucks, I think, is, is, you know, there's some expensive parts in here, but uh, uh, I think that uh, that's my target for this. The camera's more expensive. So there's a camera system. There's uh, this, and uh, and I'm, I'm planning on selling, like, a set of them at some point, uh, like a set of, you know, home security, and there'll be, a, like, a third piece to this, and maybe sell that whole set. So, although you can buy them individually. So that's that's the plan. Can I pay you in Ripple? Sure. Hold on. Yes, I'll take a uh, Ripple. Uh, no, not not Ripple. Pay me in Bitcoin. Pay me in Bitcoin. So okay. So that's uh, that's uh, coming up, and I hope you uh, you uh, give me some comments on this. If you think this is uh, messed up, or you like it, you like it, or what's the flaw with this? Um, uh, I'm thinking too that uh, I'm going to put in the software that if you attach a uh, USB camera that it will also take a picture while while it does that so but you can add your own camera I, i'm not going to ship it with a camera but it, it, it'll i can put on the software to to detect that there's a camera and automatically take a picture uh off the device when uh, you know so that you have an image too is there a downloadable app for it yeah brax me although i may make a uh, uh make a separate version of a brax secure app that just has that portion you know, this portion here, this portion, Brax Secure. Right now, this is on Brax. So it's included with Brax. Okay. Is it a one room device? It's a uh, pretty big coverage. It'll cover uh, uh, your, yeah, it's going to cover a big, big area of your house. Yeah, you can do wireless speakers if you want. You can do Bluetooth. I, I'm wired in the headphone jack right now. I'm using the headphone jack. But yes, in theory, you can use uh, uh, what separates this from other security devices. I got here late. Uh, tell me the security device that works exactly like this before you say that. Will there be a camera for out there? Yes, I already have the camera. See here, there's, there's the camera system with the video. Uh, I'm, I'm getting the, the videos on my phone. So my phone, just to show you here, in case you don't believe me, uh, I can see the videos on my phone, and it's uh, it's being uploaded. This is an optional thing, but uh, on on my device, it's uh, it's pretty elaborate. I I actually have uh, 
so if you can see the alarm in there, you can see all the alarms that we've been sending. And there's the videos. You can see some of the videos in there. So that's what it looks like. Just trying to make the angle so you can somewhat see what's on there. Hard to see, but I'm trying to, yeah, that's pretty hard to see. All right. Hard to see. But you can see, it's exactly what you see on the screen here. That's that's a blown up version of it. It's pretty much the same as there's one row for, for the phone. So so you that's what you'll see. So this is one of my products that I'm making. So I'm trying to like uh, diversify into all kinds of security, not just cybersecurity. Okay, so that's uh, that's going to be uh, uh, oh per uh, you uh, uh, Periscope is back. Okay, I'm back on Periscope now. I can see you on Periscope now. So that's coming up, and uh, if you like it, uh, will will my cats cause me panic every? Will I, uh, you don't have to turn it on. Please make it heat resistant to high temperatures. Uh, you, are you talking about uh, it should be resistant to Arizona? I don't think that's a problem. I don't think Arizona is going to be a problem, Kathy. Uh, <coughs> if it's like put in an oven, that's not going to work. If you put it in an oven, it's not going to work. Other than that, uh, it's okay. So, uh, yes, hold on. If you press the button, you know, it it, it doesn't work. So this, uh, uh, there's some competing products like this. Uh, one of them is uh, Simply Safe. Simply Safe, and they're like, you know these are all like dangerous IOT devices because they're they really uh, allow people to, to spy on you inside your house would be cool if we could make it memorize our pets movements periscopers come to YouTube should it turn off should it, it, yes you should turn you don't have to you press the button when you want to activate it all I have to do is if I'm gonna walk out of the house I just press the button that's it again a simple when you're going to get out of house press the button like that and then that's it. Walk out of the house. And then you'll get a notification if something goes on. So if you put it in your living room and uh, where your doors are and go sleep and, uh, you know, if, uh, if uh, that's okay, Kathy, that's not too bad. 110 is not unreasonable. Okay. Bruce Lee. Uh, only motion detectors inside, camera outside. Yes, Twitty. So my camera is outside. The camera you saw there. Okay, this is going to start the alarm because I'm moving. So uh, what is the radar range in uh, feet? I think... Uh, uh, alarm is active now. Alarm. Police alert. The radar range is... Uh, 10 meters to 10 to 15 meters, I think. It's a pretty big range. Uh, but I have it, it's next to metal right now. It's so, uh, it's being blocked. The, pi the piano has metal on it. So the piano is actually blocking the range here. So can I get a hot Australia? There you go, Sir Kalb. Okay, so I'm going to talk next about uh, about the uh, the important topic, which is, uh, with uh can can the burglar turn it off no kathy because by the time they turn it off the signal's already sent the burglar cannot turn it off because the moment you come into the house even if you find it and turn it off you already have the alert it already is on your phone it's too late to stop it you don't have to go in there and say stop it so you came to your house and you got the alert well it's just you who cares not nothing gonna happen but if you're not, if you, uh, if it's not you, and you look at your phone and you got an alert, then uh, uh, can alert police. You can alert the police. There's no service. There's no subscription plan for somebody to sit there and 24/7 uh, call the police. Because that's how. If you, uh, uh, boys and their toys. So if you're, if you're like, uh, you know, uh, an example. If you subscribe to ADT, I had an ADT. Uh, I want to. I have an ADT subscription before, and I paid like forty bucks a month for that. And what happens is, uh, uh, if there's an alarm, 
they call you on the phone and then they say you know is that legit what's your code if it's not legit they call the police well you can if they're gonna do that you might as well just call the police yourself uh, <clears throat> battery backup uh, you can put a battery backup but it doesn't really matter because the, the the burglar isn't gonna the burglar isn't going to yeah you can put a battery backup the burglar isn't gonna have access to it <clears throat> because by the time they uh, they trigger it it's too late you can't shut it down I see Dave's time what does that mean I think it should have your voice I can you can put any voice on it almost like lifelock <laughs> Okay, okay. I talk about uh, about phones now. So th th there's this uh, uh, YouTuber. He calls himself uh, Linux Gamer, and he uh, talks about the Librem Five. And he used to he used the term. Somebody uh, called me out on it, and I want to give him credit because you know he was the guy that used this term, Linux Gamer. And the term he used for this phone is uh, for these kinds of phones. It's spy brick, and I've been calling it spy brick for the last few weeks, and I forget where I get that, and then I find, turns out, yep, I got it from Linux Gamer. He was the first one that I saw that called it a spy brick, and I've been calling it that for for uh, a month or so or more. So a spy brick. This is a spy brick, but you just don't even know, you know, what it means to have a, an actual spy brick. Are there people on per on Periscope? I don't see any comments on Periscope. Is Periscope live? Did I, uh, uh, my uh, Periscope is not, is, is my Periscope is so zucked up. I mean, I don't see anything in here. So if you're talking on Periscope, I am not seeing any, it's, it's messed up. I don't see any comments whatsoever. Ah, there you go. Oh my gosh, now I see it. Okay, Life of Crawford, you're the first one I've seen. Sorry guys, if you're all talking on Periscope, I did not see any anything until now. Okay, Life of Crawford's been asking questions. And can I back? No, I can't see anything from the back. Hello, I Icky, Icky in Arizona. Okay, so okay, so I could not see Periscope. Periscope was screwing up. So didn't see any comments. Uh, so if you if you uh, ask me a question and I didn't see it, please ask me again. Hello, Fritz. So if uh, if if you uh, if I missed a comment, uh, please uh, comment now or go to YouTube. I swear a lot. Uh, okay. So hello, Eagle Source. So if if you had a question that I missed, then you can ask it again. Okay. What's a spy brick? This is a spy brick. Hold it on. There's your spy brick. Okay, what is what exactly makes this a spy brick? So just just to do a uh, a basic comparison of some of the features that are intended to be placed on the Librem Five phone, which uh, is a is a privacy oriented phone that's coming out that I told you that I pre ordered, and uh, it's kind of exciting this Librem Five, and uh, and I want to show you the difference between that and these devices. So I want to make sure you understand in detail. And there's a bit of disinformation about it too. Some people are just uh, just not understanding what the issue is. Uh, and I'll get into that, like people confusing cybersecurity and privacy. And, and I had a video about that. that I talked about it. And they're applying it to the Librem 5, and, and they're wrong. They are wrong. So one of the first features that the Librem 5 has, which is kind of interesting, hello, Jericho. One of the interesting features from Librem 5 is that they put hardware switches on there. And the hardware switch can turn off the Wi-Fi, can turn off the camera, can turn off the, uh, the microphone, and can turn off the, uh, cell, the cell baseband. Now, what is a cell baseband? The cell baseband is the, uh, the uh, module that communicates with, the, with, with your carrier. So it's basically the 3G, 4G, LTE, whatever. All of the, that data, all, all of the electronics for all that is called a baseband. Okay, now, the, base, the cell baseband, or let me just call it baseband. Uh, I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this. But the baseband on an iPhone or an Android is actually on the same board as the rest of it. It's a single board. 
So what happens is the, the baseband is actually a chip on this board. It's not separate. It's the same phone. So the baseband is a chip on it. So, you know, like say, let's say it's a Broadcom chip. The chip will be, you know, uh, right in the middle of the board and it's gonna just be part of the phone itself. Okay, Uncle Joe. Okay, so it'll be part of the phone itself. Now, what, what makes that interesting is this. The, the uh, firmware, meaning the software for, let's say the Broadcom chip or whatever chip is used, for uh, for the for the uh, uh, LTE 4G 3G whatever all of that the firmware for that or the software for that chip is made by the manufacturer let's say Broadcom and you cannot see that you can't modify it it's not modifiable it's built into the chip and uh, it's basically proprietary There's, it's not open source it's not it's not visible you do not know exactly what works inside there but there's a way to update it remotely to some degree okay and i don't know what portion of it can be up we don't really know what goes on with this I'm, I'm telling you we know a little a little bit of this but not much so your phone can be updated can update that that chip area uh uh broadcom just bought Symantec, so Zoc, Broadcom is, uh, you know, getting to be a big player here. So, because their chip business is, you know, it's not growing, so they started to diversify and start buying Symantec and uh, CA. So CA, uh, CA is now part of Symantec, I mean, uh, Broadcom, and so is the corporate side or the enterprise side of Symantec. Is that the same as firmware? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Firmware, firmware is the uh, the fixed part of the code that runs a particular hardware. So, the the code that runs hardware is called firmware. But often there's a area that allows you to make some changes to it. And depending on the chip, it has different names. Uh, in some cases, they call it microcode. Uh, for example, I have a uh, a uh, blade rf uh, device and you can actually upload into a separate flash area some other code so you can add code to the main firmware okay on a phone you will notice that you will often get something called carrier updates anybody has ever gotten a carrier update on your phone i've been talking about this for years anybody has ever gotten a carrier update on the phone so you you go to your iphone for example and it says carrier update And it asks you if you want to update it right now. Anybody's gotten that? Raise your hands. Type 1 if you've ever gotten a carrier update. Anybody ever gotten a carrier update? Don't tell me you haven't because I don't believe you. If you haven't seen a carrier update, I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> it's impossible. Okay. 100% of you should have gotten a carrier update. And, and we'll talk about your, uh, how do you pronounce your name? Z H Quan Ren. Uh, we'll talk about Lineage OS a little later. Uh, I'll, I'll respond to that. But how many of you have gotten, a, a Pilot Mike doesn't have a phone. Pilot Mike never got a carrier update, so never got a phone. I get carrier updates all the time. Okay, I've gotten many, many, many times. And I always get scared when I get a carrier update because I'm going to tell you exactly what happens uh, with a carrier update carrier update must be and this is a uh, it's a theory because I, I don't know exactly how it works we don't have the documentation for this I would imagine it writes to the flash memory off the chip the Broadcom chip or whatever the chip is that they use for the mo uh, for the uh, uh, 3g 4g you know the cell signal okay no, 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 that is not a software update. It's specifically called carrier update. It's issued by your carrier, AT&T, T-Mobile, whatever. They issue the carrier update. And I, we presume they put in some, something in there that relates to the carrier. Something that relates to what, you know, where to find their, uh, you know, what frequency to find their towers and stuff like that. That, I assume, is what's in the carrier update. 
but we don't really know what's in the carrier updates and what you can write in the carrier update because it writes to the carrier the i mean the uh, broadcom chip or the uh, uh of course you've always had it jericho you know maybe uh, maybe your phone does give you an option uh yes carrier updates they, they don't always happen uh, often it depends on the carrier but um I, you know you you get them you know at least once a year once a once a year typically does it say carrier update or just it says specifically says carrier update that's a good question twitty that is what i'm going to tell you now i don't exactly know what's being written but i know that that's probably written to flash probably as part of this chip there's probably, probably some flash memory on the uh uh near near or in the Broadcom or I mean the uh, the modem chip the uh, the cell chip and it takes some code in there what exactly is in the code I don't know but I'm gonna tell you something that is really 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 interesting for you to know did you know I do that all the time General Eaton I have a fake I can uh, demonstrate a fake network for you I can fake your uh, your cell tower I have the hardware for that. I blade RF and all that. Did you know that that cell chip in there, the baseband chip, shares the zucking RAM with your zucking phone application OS? Let me repeat that. iOS, in fact, everything you do on the phone, shares the memory iOS or Android shares the memory with that zucking baseband. What the zuck? Can you imagine a three letter agency saying, I know how to intercept this. We will put a carrier update on a phone that we can read the zucking contents of their RAM and see what they're doing on the zucking phone. Do we know anything about this? Of course not. Does anybody tell you this? No, but it's a fact that if the carrier baseband shares the same zucking memory area at the same RAM as the phone, then come on. Someone, someone could write code to read it. This is not rocket science here. This is not rocket science not rocket science if the baseband can read it and can issue a carrier update what the zuck i'm going to tell you something else that you need to know two things one is called one is called uh um uh stingray one is called stingray and another is uh is a uh is driving around this place in Maryland or Fort Meade or Virginia. So, so I've had these. Uh, uh, one of you guys here. <clears throat> one of you guys here. I think uh, uh, I don't know if that person is on the broadcast live or not. But don't indicate it if you are. Don't don't uh, say who you are. But one of you, one of you, one of our viewers, which uh, uh, have told me this before. This person drives around in various parts of the country, especially in Virginia uh, and Maryland. And when you drive across the freeway in a place like Fort Meade and certain areas, they get a carrier update. The phone gets a carrier update. <clears throat> the phone can get a carrier update. Can it target a single phone? Uh, I don't know, but let's assume that uh, if you can stingray the phone, then you can intercept and send a signal to it. Uh, I presume it has to connect to it. So, yep, uh, if you're going to be a stingray, it, it has to target some specific phones, yes. Okay? Although it can do it in general. So just imagine if I were three, I mean, you know, I'm just talking theoretically here. Just, you know, I, I don't know exactly how they do this. Uh, but as a uh, as a a software expert, I can tell you, you know, in just in theory, how it could be done. If they can do a carrier update, and the carrier and the baseband chip shares the same zucking memory as the application and the OS, the same kernel memory, 
That means it can read encrypted codes. It can read anything that's in memory. And who can do that? Well, I guess anyone who can force a carrier update. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Stingray, that's what, part of what Stingray does. It can cause a carrier update. So, in fact, Stingray may have that code in there. Uh, how does I, I had a video about how Stingray worked. If you want me to repeat that broadcast. Uh, I will explain to you how Stingray works and exactly. Uh, I, I had that broadcast some time ago. I can repeat the broadcast, you understand. But uh, so Stingray, Stingray is an example where uh, uh, they intercept the signal, they capture your phone, and they identify you by your IMZ code. Your phone has an IMZ on it. Okay, that's the identifier that's unique to your to your subscription to the carrier and there's a device ID called IMEI that's also on the phone and uh, and and there's a flash memory of some sort that stores some of these values because the IMEI is hard coded to the flash of that of of the cell baseband so it's part of that circuitry and they're able to write over that with a carrier update so IMEI MZ those identify your specific device. Once they know your specific device, then what can they do? They can, in theory now, target you by intercepting your signal and putting themselves as a, uh, as a um, carrier in the middle, and then they can send you a signal of some sort to either listen to, you, to your data, watch your internet activity, or, uh, or update the code on your actual computer, uh, on your phone, using something called a carrier update or alter your internet because since they're they're on the internet they can in, you know they can do what is called uh, packet uh, um, uh, they can intercept the packets and replace them so if they th if they see you're sending a packet to google.com and they have the link they can uh, automate in an automated way, act like they're Google.com and give you feedback that makes you think they're Google.com, but it's not. Okay, a man in the middle kind of thing. Okay, uh, funneling? No, uh, that's not the term for it. No, I uh, my my mind is uh, my mind is uh, uh, what it, it's automatic, Paul. No, the, you're, the the way the phone works. Maybe I need to discuss Stingray and how that works again. Uh, I can explain that in great detail, but this is probably not the broadcast for it. But I'm, I'll make sure they make you understand this, because if you understand this, you should be scared of this device. This is this is a very very scary thing that we're. we're uh, uh, can they open the contacts? Uh, many many ways of doing that already. So uh, many many. Uh, basically, they spoof your tower, and then they're in the middle, and then they take your traffic, and then they uh, they. Um, they do packet injection. That's the word I was looking for. Packet injection. They inject traffic into the packet. So you send traffic out the internet. They capture that. They know what your intent is, and they send you different traffic back. I, I'll give you an example of this. If you go to Google and say, I want to search for a uh, nuclear bomb, don't type that in. The sensors will, stop, will spot that. And... And uh, uh, and a somebody intercepting the traffic, a man in the middle in this case, uh, or government in the middle, or something in the middle, uh, can take that search and then feed you uh, how to make cake. So your query is nuclear bomb. The response is how to bake a cake. That's packet injection. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, can they open uh, uh, no. Uh, there are other things that you can do, uh, Kathy. This is this is that requires some other step. That requires a root rooting the machine, which is something else we'll talk about a little later. We will talk about that. So that's rooting the thing. This this enables them to spy on it and 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 uh, and put in a uh, a new code. And since the the uh, cell chip can actually see your RAM, that's kind of scary because if something, what's to prevent the, the chip if you alter the code from reading what's in there? I have no idea how it works, but you know, if they're building that into Stingray, they maybe have some way of doing it that we don't know about. Let's assume that they know how to do that. 
okay so let's assume that we can we we can uh, that they can do that or we're not being smart we got to be smart and understand what they what whoever they is whoever the one that's in the middle can do that uh, whether it be a hacker or three-letter agency just you understand it can be done this is what is different about the Librem 5. The Librem 5, what they did was they took the chip out of the board, meaning the phone board is different from the, from the, uh, the cell baseband. So on what, what the, just so you understand what, uh, what Librem, what Purism did on the Librem 5, uh, they bought a chip. You know how you have those MiFi's, your, your, your own uh, private, uh, internet they took the chip from that you know the MiFi's and put it on the phone and have it as two separate things so the the, the MiFi chip has its own uh, memory its own everything it's not really connected to the main phone They're, they don't share RAM they don't share data whereas on a average phone on your iOS and Android they share RAM okay if they share RAM, then you should be really scared because, my gosh, what could somebody read off RAM? That's a very, very scary thing. Very, very scary thing. Okay? So, just so you know. So, that's why the Librem 5 is unusual because they said, that's part of the problem. Let's put the chip away from the phone and, and let's see what the effect is. Okay, that's a big deal to me. That's a very big deal because that is the reason why Snowden does not carry a phone. He understands this. Snowden doesn't carry a phone because there's no phone in existence uh, that is free of this baseband accessing the RAM. So if you're dealing with a three-letter agency trying, is that, if that's your, your, uh, your opposition, as is Snowden's opposition, is a three-letter or all the three-letter agencies, then obviously they're gonna if they find out what their phone is and put to get the IMSI of the phone, they can then do uh, inject some uh, carry update on the phone and access the RAM and see what he's doing on the other parts of this. Okay, that is extremely scary. Uh, I don't know how how he does it, Fritz. Uh, if I were him, I'm not gonna do landline either. And he can't just borrow somebody else's phone. He can't say, let me borrow your phone. You know, you, you, he, can't, he can't go to a stranger on the street and say, can I borrow your phone? He can't do that. And the reason is because of voice fingerprinting. So they can spot you on the phone, even on the burner phone, using voice fingerprinting. So when you talk on a phone, uh, all of these uh, alerts uh, show up on various phone networks that are connected to the National Blocking Agency and they can voice fingerprint anyone that they're looking for and say, oh yeah, somebody spoke on the phone over here. So yeah, so uh, if, I were, if I were Snowden, I'd just meet in person. You know, cloak and dagger. Be a cloak and dagger operation. By the way, one of my projects that I'm working on too, maybe I can get it done before Christmas, I don't know. But it's a bug detector. So if you want to go into your house and see if somebody put a secret camera or let's say your uh, Airbnb or hotel and somebody put a secret camera in there and you want to see see if there is one, then you can run this device across the room and uh, check the walls and, and, uh, and see if you get, uh, you get an RF signal from there that indicates that there is a device. So that is, uh, that's one of my other projects that I'm trying to work on. So uh, the, the searches for little people go through RAM. Yes, bad cow, the little people. Uh, let's burn out the cell phone screen from inside, pour bleach into it. Ducking, yes, Twitty, glass house. So yes, uh, so I'm making all these electronic devices. I'm, I'm excited, you know, I just don't have enough time in the day to do it. Uh, but the electronic devices, uh, the bug detector fortunately has no software, it's all hardware. These are a little harder to make because they're all software. This is mostly software. The hardware is not enough to, to uh, this is actually a lot more sophisticated than you think. It has a transmitter and receiver. It can actually trigger home automation. So there may be various versions of this. This one can actually uh, send an RF signal to some other device that can cause a chain reaction. Uh, so 
as a base station, it's going to have a lot, a lot of extra features than that. How can I tell if a laptop on my Wi-Fi is using uh, a VPN? Kathy, if you're on my VPN, it's easy. So uh, uh, Braxme has a link on the Braxme website uh, for IP check. Then you can tell if it's on my VPN or on Tor or not. I obviously I have no way of knowing if it's on some other VPN. You you only know on your VPN. So I don't you know I don't have I don't have a way of knowing uh, whose VPN it is because it's just an IP address. Okay. So uh, so anyway, uh, this, this that is needed for hotels. Yes, Eagle Soar. So that's one of my products. So anyway, back to back to what I'm talking about with these uh, with these phones. So so. The carry updates is a really, really scary proposition here because, you know, if you drive by certain parts of the country near government installations, why are they triggering carry updates? Now, now, admittedly, I didn't, this is not a scientific check. I was just told by people that they drove by these places and they, they uh, accepted a carrier update. And my response to that is, as far as I'm concerned, if you accept a carrier update of that nature, then your phone needs to be bricked. I'd return it. If it's still under warranty, return it to the manufacturer, to Apple and whoever, Samsung or wherever you got it from. Return it and get a new phone. Because if you inadvertently accepted a carrier update that you shouldn't have because you were close to some of these installations or you're being, uh, you're being, uh, uh, Stingray, then your phone is permanently zuck. If, if you, if it gets a carry update to it, it's not part of the OS. So, no matter what they change on the new OS, uh, you know, so you get 12.4, iOS 12.4. That's not going to impact on the carrier update because that's in a different memory lo flash location. There's no way to update that. We as ordinary people cannot control what goes into flash. Okay, we cannot control. This is why this is like scary stuff I'm talking about here. This is why I'm saying, fuck this. I want to know what's going on with my phone. A Librem 5 is a Linux phone where I know, I will know or can know exactly what it does. There aren't going to be any mysteries. Uh, so much more technical than just being followed track. Yes, Paul, I, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to explain it in, in layman's terms if I can to show you that it's a, there's a lot of complexity here to what these guys do. Now, let me tell you something else that I've told you before. Uh, how do you know, uh, uh, how do you know you are on Stingray? Um, uh, how do you know you're on Stingray? I, uh, I, I had the answer to that and I, I, it's in my notes. Uh, I can't remember the answer, but there's a way to know if you're in Stingray, yes. I, I can't, re I, I'm drawing a blank here. Let me think about it. I, I forgot what the answer is, but there's something that changes on the phone and that will uh, warn you that you're in Stingray. Well, first of all, there'll be a man in the middle. So if you run my man in the middle app, you know, you, you uh, there will be a man in the middle. So that will detect a man in the middle. It, it may not be Stingray, it could be something else. But Stingray is definitely one of them, okay? Um, so anyway, uh, so let me talk to you about the other part of the, uh, the, spying, the spying proposition here. And again, so one of the things that, uh, you know, make me like Hello Kelp, make me like the Librem 5. This is, this, is, uh, this is on the Wi-Fi. Now, I've told you this before. There's nothing new, but I want to explain it again. And, uh, and this is another reason why, uh, why uh, Snowden doesn't, doesn't uh, carry a cell phone. So I'm talking about this thing called promiscuous mode, okay? I'm talking about this thing called promiscuous mode. So your phone, uh, yeah, that's what it was, Kaka. Okay, that's what it was. The phone switches to 3G, yes. Uh, that's how you know. You're an LTE, goes to 3G, and then it won't go back up. You, you, you uh, 
Turn off your computer, your phone, turn it back on. It stays on 3G. That's a sign you've been, uh, you've been, uh, you've been uh, uh, stingrayed. Okay, and the only way to turn off and leave 3G is to reboot the device. If you can't, if it won't leave, three, leave 3G and you have to boot the device uh, afterwards, then, uh, then you've been, you've been stingray. That's what it was. That's what it was. And the reason is the way the hack works. There's an LTE hack and a 3G hack. 3G hack is undetectable because you will remain on 3G. But if you're an LTE, uh, in order for the hack to occur, they have to downgrade you to 3G. So, if they d downgrade you to 3G, then the hack takes place. That's what I know of the current way that, you know, hackers know how to get into to it with some sort of Stingray-like hack. If there's some new version that, that does LTE, uh, uh, maybe they force a way to reboot so you don't notice it. I don't know, but at the moment, you have to reboot to leave this 3G mode that the uh, stingray will do to your phone okay so that's one of the ways so if you if you know look at your phone and somehow you see 3g on it say why is it on 3g it's supposed to be lte am i in a bad signal and uh then you reboot the phone and then you go on 4g then you start to say why did my phone go to 4g in the same area you, ha you haven't left it's you're still in the same zone same cell tower and then you rebooted your phone and it goes to 4G or LTE, then you know that you've been stingrayed. Because that's the way that hack works. Okay? So thank you for reminding me what it was. Because I had to remember what the hack was. So I'll tell you, I'll go through it tomorrow and tell you, uh, tell you uh, uh, the stingray. I have all the hardware for doing stingray right here. So... And, uh, yeah, so I, I understand all the mechanics of exactly how to do the hack. And, uh, and uh, I haven't repeated a hack yet, though. I, I haven't had time. But I have all the equipment to do it, and I, I haven't done it. Uh, there is 4G alternative DHS is using now from... Yes, uh, Levendi, that's correct. There is a, uh, there's a new... It's not called Stingray. It's... Uh, Anyway, it's another one of these C names, okay? Uh, some of you can Google it. There, there's another one that's, uh, it's not called Stingray. It has a new name. You're, uh, you teach, we remind later. There you go, Kaka. Okay, so anyway, uh, uh, it doesn't matter what they call the name. They all the function the same, so there's a 4G version. But the, the reason I'm telling you this is because we know what the flaws are in 4G. And how, you know, they're supposed to be encrypting the IMZ on 4G. The IMZ is the identifier of your phone. And there are hacker conferences telling them, telling you, like on DEF CON, how to get the IMZ even if, they, if you think it's supposed to be encrypted. You can force a phone to decrypt it. That's one of the uh, f tricks uh, on, uh, on uh, using a Stingray device. Okay, now... So let me talk about promiscuous mode. It's not a dangerous thing on the phone. And this is one of the things that you cannot turn off on the phone. And it's, it really bugs me. It really bugs me. Hello, Beth. Beth is back. Thank you, Beth. Thank you. So, so let me just tell you another thing about the, the device uh, th that uh, is uh, really, really irritating about uh, this promiscuous mode. So let me just tell you a little bit of history again what promiscuous mode is. Promiscuous mode... Uh, and for those who just came in like Beth, so before I was telling you about, to summarize, I was talking about the baseband chip that's on your phone, which is the cell chip. This is the, the portion of your phone that connects to, to the cell uh, carrier. And that chip shares RAM with your OS, but you cannot control that since that part of the OS is actually sitting on a, with different flash, different firmware, different programs, and yet it can access the same RAM. So if somebody is able to insert a new code on there, as they do with carrier updates, then in theory, someone could read your RAM. So it's very, very scary, and it, it may be something that's being done with Stingray and all of these other things. So, so, so anyway, that's something that... Uh, just uh, we are theorizing that as possible, and uh, 
and uh, uh, just because of the design. Okay. Now, uh, back to back to uh, back to the promiscuous mode. So promiscuous mode has another element that bugs me on a phone, and and, and promiscuous mode is something that hackers have known about for a while. It's how you hack Wi-Fi back in the day. And one of the things you do when you you uh, you want to hack Wi-Fi back in the day, I'm talking. Let's go back to 2000 and 2005. Let's go back that far. 2005. If you want to hack Wi-Fi, you got to get a special Wi-Fi card um, uh, sold by some of these companies that make Wi-Fi for hackers. And uh, uh, I forget one of the most popular ones. Uh, it, again, my, my memory is not good here. On I haven't used them in a while, but uh, uh, you can buy. These devices are sold, uh, you know, you can attach them to your PC. And what happens is you can search networks around you and it can report on the network and what the SSID is or if there's no SSID, what the MAC address of the device is, the signal strength and all that kind of data. And it's, uh, it's uh, called promiscuous mode. And when you run Wireshark, Wireshark is what the program that hackers use to, to scan your network. When you run Wireshark, you have to specify if you have a promiscuous mode Wi-Fi. Otherwise, you can't do this. So if you have one of those devices that's incompatible, then you can turn it on and then you can now check out the Wi-Fi around you. Okay? Now, what's interesting is since 2007 uh, or so, every device sold has promiscuous mode. It's no longer just limited to the to devices that are used by, by hackers. Now every iPhone, every Android, every computer, every PC, every laptop, every iPad, all of them have promiscuous mode. Wi-Fi Analyzer gets the output from promiscuous mode. Uh, Wi-Fi Analyzer is using the data from promiscuous mode. So that is promiscuous mode where it says, I'm going to check out networks all around me. I don't log into the networks. I'm basically listening to radio waves. Okay, so promiscuous mode means it's actually listening to the airwaves and seeing what signals are being sent out on the air from various devices, and it tries to decrypt them. It, they're, they're, uh, they're not encrypted. So promiscuous mode are, it means that the devices are announcing themselves, and you get the announcement, and you take it to the device. Google, uh, in, in those early days, in 2005 or whatever, they said, oh, uh, we can use this uh, signal, the, pr the promiscuous mode, to, uh, to track locations. And the way we're going to do this is we're going uh, to go around with Street View cars, because they were doing Street View then, and those cars have you know cameras, and they also put Wi-Fi sensors on those cameras with promiscuous mode, and as they were driving around, they were recording the GPS position of the car, of the Street View car, and the Wi-Fi's in the area as found by promiscuous mode, and their MAC addresses, because each, each router announces their MAC address or their serial number. And that became the database for location tracking as we know it today. That's called Wi-Fi triangulation. So uh, I don't need to explain it in detail, but just understand that if I know which Wi-Fi uh, routers are near you, and I know the signal strength in proportion to other Wi-Fi signals. If I can see that your Wi-Fi signal is is uh, is uh, weaker or stronger depending where you are, then I will know your your precise position within six feet, and I I can estimate it based on signal strength and the MAC addresses of the Wi-Fi, and I have the GPS location of every Wi-Fi because of the street view cars since 2006 or whenever they started doing that, okay? Now, that's changed now. They don't do street view cars anymore. They don't do street view cars anymore. What they do today, what they do today is use, um, is use um, uh, Android. So every Android and every Chrome in here, in here, this is an Android device. On your Android devices, you cannot turn this, well, you can, but uh, in most cases, you can't. Uh, 
you can't turn off promiscuous mode, but there's code in the uh, in some versions of Google you cannot turn it off. Some versions of Android you can't turn it off. There's no way to turn it off on Chrome. But these devices track the data from promiscuous mode, get your current location, your IP address, and all that, and then sends it to Google. Sends it to Google. Now, a, a DEF CON hacker, um, Sammy, Sammy, Sammy the hacker. So Sammy is a well-known hacker DEF CON. So he actually broke into that Google database and, you know, and used it to say, I'm going to track your locations using the same data that's from Google, but I'm going to directly connect to the Google database. When, when they announced that at DEF CON, somebody at Google locked down that database, but they were actually, Google was selling that database even to, to Verizon and so on. So that data was being sold, which had the wi every single Wi-Fi router in existence and the GPS location for it and the MAC address. So that was happening. That was happening. And, and uh, very, very, very scary kind of thing because uh, the problem with this is how do you zucking turn off promiscuous mode? How do you turn it off? There's no mechanism to turn the sucker off. So if you can't turn off promiscuous mode, then what do we do? So we cannot stop. Some of you will say, well, I, you, this zucking guy is like full of it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, I can go to my permissions and say, I don't want location to be shared. Anybody want to say that? Because, you know, if you think I'm stupid, you know, I don't come here <laughs> as a stupid person, okay? I hopefully know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> the way that it actually works, permissions on iOS and Android, the, the way that you actually, uh, uh, yeah, I use DuckDuckGo, I use that. The way that you're actually uh, uh, giving permissions to a device for location is you're actually telling Google, Google, please don't share my location to the third party, the website, the platform, the Facebook. Uh, don't share the data to the third party. That's what permissions mean. It doesn't mean stop collecting location. I just want to make sure you're understanding this. It does not mean stop collecting the location. That's not what it means. It simply means do not share that data to the third party. It means Google and Apple are still collecting your location. You cannot stop that. Definitely no way to stop it on Apple, on iOS. There's no way to stop it on iOS. There's actually a way to stop the reporting of Wi-Fi routers to Google on some versions of Android. I believe you can do it on uh, maybe like Android 8 and 9 that you can shut down the ability to capture the Wi-Fi routers and participate in the collection of router data. But that doesn't matter at all. And the reason it doesn't matter is because if there's a thousand people going along the streets every day and they have an Android, those Androids are reporting your Wi-Fi's anyway. So saying that your device doesn't report it doesn't affect them at all. It's a fake promise. It makes you think, it may, hold on to your comments. I'll read your comments in a moment. Uh, uh, it makes you think that uh, you can do something about it, but the actual reality is it doesn't matter because if, if, if uh, unless all of you stop collecting promiscuous mode, which most people aren't going to do, uh, you're going to report the router data, the Wi-Fi router data to Apple and Google. I told you you can't stop it on Apple. Google put a way to stop it on your device, but it doesn't matter. It, uh, in order to stop it, anyone near you has to stop it. Maybe if you go to Greenland and, and, uh, and go into to the woods or in the rocky mountains of Greenland, then maybe uh, if you're the only one there, that well, you don't want to have Wi-Fi anyway, so it won't matter. Okay, so you can't shut the zucking thing down. And, and the, the, the program for tracking your location by Google, which is based on finding the routers near you, is not something that's part of that switch. That is not part of that switch. There, I don't have any switch to turn that off. Lavelle Logan, how are you? 
Okay, there's no way to turn that off. So now we are sucked with your Apple and Android. Now, now, wh why is this uh, important again to compare with the Librem 5? The Librem 5, when you do not want to use the Wi-Fi, actually has a hardware switch to the Wi-Fi. So the Librem 5 has a hardware switch to the, uh, to the baseband and to the Wi-Fi, which means it can shut down promiscuous mode once and for all. If there's no power to the Wi-Fi, which there's no way because it's, again, a chip within a chip. All of you guys use a phone where the Wi-Fi chip is embedded into the main phone board together with the cell baseband. And if there's no way to shut it down, then we're zucked. On the Librem 5, they're separate chips so they can turn them off. That has nothing to do. Airplane mode doesn't do anything. Airplane mode is not. It's useless. Airplane mode is not connected to this. The reason is that uh, airplane mode just says do not connect to the Wi-Fi. Airplane mode says I will not connect to the Wi-Fi. I will not offer you an option to connect to the Wi-Fi. It doesn't stop receiving on Wi-Fi, which is enough to cause Wi-Fi triangulation. Wi-Fi triangulation is passive. It just reads the data from the radio waves. It's basically like an FM radio. So if your phone is an FM radio listening, they don't, airplane mode isn't gonna care because that has nothing to do with anything. So I don't look at uh, airplane mode because airplane mode was, is about to stop you from transmitting. That's what airplane mode is. They don't want you on the aircraft transmitting in the airplane because they said your transmission may affect the electronics of the airplane. And if, you know, 200 of you are transmitting, then you, you in theory, could cause enough RF to, to, uh, to influence something on the airplane. That's a theory, okay? Now, that is not how promiscuous mode works. Promiscuous mode is a receiver. There's no switch to the receiver. Therefore, if I even cache the data from promiscuous mode on memory and then I send it to Google when the connection to the network occurs, you're still zucked. Okay, how many people do you think are even going to bother turning stuff off? Well, if I have a switch for it, I definitely will turn it off and practically everyone that has a, that will get a Librem 5 is going to be, uh, be aware of all of this and so they will shut it off. This is, you know, one of the best things that I've ever heard of. So I've uh, Snowden himself was trying to build a device that can do this. And Snowden's approach was a little bit more complicated. So Snowden was uh, creating a device with some other uh, uh, guy in, uh, in Massachusetts. And they were trying to put a RF sensor around the phone to detect if the phone is emitting any RF, meaning if it's, re if it's sending. The problem is that you are not Re, uh, tracking receiving because this is how software works you assume that you need to connect now no it doesn't work like that because if promiscuous mode is running I can actually and this I actually have a program that can show you this okay okay I actually have a program that can show you this you I, I can make your Raspberry Pi just actually project Skyhook if you know who Skyhook is they actually have a pro a project on the internet where you can actually make a Raspberry Pi uh, track promiscuous mode, store the locations and GPS and all that on a file and then transmit it to Google or to whoever when you connect to the network. So your device is looking for a network and it doesn't find any, so it just caches the data. Then when it finds the connection, it connects to the network and sends the data. So that's what you worry about. It doesn't have to be online now. The moment you turn on the switch, it can transmit the data. So you have to stop it from collecting data by a switch. And that's what the Librem 5 offers. It's actually switchable. So then, then you know it can't track your location. So if you understand what I'm saying. What about facial data? That, that collected in the same way. That, uh, uh, remind me, I'm going to get trying to get into that. I may not have time. Because uh, I want to talk about that. It's called the Secure Enclave. We'll talk about that uh, if I have time, okay? Do, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying here? So promiscuous mode can only be solved 
by a hardware switch. So somebody, you know, uh, Librem 5 said, okay, we're going to create a new phone. And they're having difficulty with this. I understand they have to create a brand new, you know, they have to buy commercial parts and say, how do we do this? How do we accomplish this? And make a hardware switch. And so, so it's going to be, you know, the parts are going to be more expensive because they, they don't have it on one board. Okay. Uh, most things now are sold on one chip, one board. You know, uh, they call SOC, system on a chip. Everything's on there, the Wi-Fi, the, the Bluetooth and everything. And, and the way that uh, Librem 5 is handling it, they're putting the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth in a separate chip and then the baseband, the carrier baseband on another chip. Okay? So just so you, you understand how that works. Uh, uh, if you want to try to understand you know, how do I know this, the thing is that I know how software works and, 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 uh, and as, as soon as I understand you know, the mechanism of this, I don't really need to go into the detail of, uh, of how it works. It's not, I don't have time to go and, you know, uh, and do that. But I understand what it's capable of because I've done every kind of software imaginable and I have, uh, I have, uh, you know, programmed in every language from assembly language uh, to, uh, you know, I'm mostly a C programmer uh, for most of my life. And, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, very attuned to all this. I've done any kind of project, seven and dollar phone and you get to beta. Uh, that's okay, we fool can, you can afford it. Are you saying that you cannot afford it, we fool can? You might as well just stay to this because this is such a great phone. I mean, look at all the spying it's doing on you. I guess you missed my first part. For those of you who missed the first part, like Wee Fu Can, let me tell you again. The carrier baseband. Listen to this, Wee Fu Can. The carrier baseband, the cell, the cell chip. The chip from the front that connects to the cell tower. I know you can afford millions of these. You can afford millions of these. Okay? The cell chip that is put into your phone, it's embedded in your phone, it's part of the same board, can be reprogrammed using something called a carrier update, which some of you get, and if you go to a three-letter agency, you get a carrier update. They're able to change the code on the carrier portion. Okay, you just got back from where I am, we can. Okay, we can, listen to this. The cell baseband, which has some proprietary software, proprietary carrier updates, proprietary programming, shares the same zucking RAM as the, as the operating system. Shares the same zucking RAM. Okay, and you're telling me, huh, we don't read some zucking beta Librem 5. I'm okay with the zucking iPhone and Android that shares a zucking RAM with a carrier baseband that has code put in by some third party. Zuck. Zuck. I'll take the beta. I'll take the beta, we can I'll take the beta. Because either that or I'm going to stick to my Blackberry. Okay? The problem with the BlackBerry guys is that there are many problems with the BlackBerry. You know, I recommended the BlackBerry if you want to do texting and phone, but for internet use, it's just not good for that. And the reason is, one of the main reasons is their web, the web browser that comes with BlackBerry is so old that their root certificates haven't been updated. Because the root certificates haven't been updated on the phone, some websites that use HTTPS don't connect. They say, you know, insecure connection. Since there is actually no BlackBerry Enterprise anymore, nobody's running the BlackBerry servers, then there's no way to, for somebody to update all that on the Zucking BlackBerry. Nobody cares anymore. So there's the problem. That's problem number one. So if you're going to uh, need a phone, then you need something that actually you can use for long run aside from the problem that at some point 4g uh, i mean 3g is not going to be supported anymore it's going to be supported for many years so we're okay so the blackberry phone is great for texting and phone it's great for that but if you're relying on it for you know regular internet access it doesn't track your location 
it doesn't connect to Google, so that's okay. So that's fine. Uh, but uh, if you want something more sophisticated, like do websites and so on, you're going to need something more sophisticated, like a Librem 5 that doesn't track. Okay, so that's the reason why. Now, now somebody made a comment, and I'm going to tell you that, you know, the issue that I have with some of these security, security so-called experts, some of these security experts like Zuck, I mean, you know, are they shills? I don't know who these security guys work for. So this guy went on Reddit. This guy went on Reddit and made a statement. They said this Librem 5 sucks. Thank you, Eagle Source. This Librem 5 sucks because it's not secure. The most secure device on the planet is an Android. That's what this guy said. The most secure device on the planet, according to this guy, is an Android. Now we're going to examine that. Uh, and another secure device is an iPhone. And a third party phone is not going to be as secure as one made by, uh, uh, by Android software or by Apple hardware. Now, what, what, is, what is the difference between these two and why is it different from, uh, you know, people commenting about the Librem 5 not being secure. Some of this is tr true nonsense, and, and this is part of what I'm saying about the difference between cybersecurity and privacy. Because who's the cybersecurity for? Who's the privacy for? Well, I'm going to tell you something. Privacy is for you and I, the little people. Okay, we Fukan, are you part of the little people or are you part of the rich, the rich big people? So, uh, you know, but for most of us, I consider most of you to be the little people since you're not the corporate big shots, okay? So the little people have no control. You're the ones that I address my privacy broadcast to, every one of you individually. You're the middle guy? <laughs> every one of you. <clears throat> Happy Friday, MAGA, Heather. So, uh, uh, so every one of you is the little guy here. And and the the issue that I'm uh, the issue that I'm uh, uh, your your micro, the 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 uh, the the the, uh, the little guy and I you know by little guy I, I don't mean to imply that some are you poor, because some of you are not poor or some of you are but you are not, you're not the the big players that control people, the big people. Control. The universe. They control what you see. They control the news. They control, you know, what what gets to be an important topic. They they control the press. They control the government. That's the big people. Now now, it's not a rumor. Hody sixteen. Why is that a rumor? They always drop a new iPhone every September. That is not a fucking rumor. That should be an expectation. Okay, so so uh, so uh, anyway, the the problem that we're we're dealing with here is that uh, uh, communications about phones and what's secure and what's not is based on the premise of who you're trying to protect. Who are you trying to protect? I will definitely not buy a new iPhone. That, that's guaranteed. I already pre-ordered my Librem Five. I'm not buying a new iPhone. No. No, I'm not buying new iPhone. No new iPhone for me. I'm I'm uh, uh, pre-ordered my Librem Five, and if it's good, I'll order two or three. Okay, I'll use that as a computer. Okay, so Librem Five for me. Rumor being sarcastic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway. Uh, yeah, be happy what you have. Get a Librem 5 in addition to it later on, but who cares? I have a 10, you know. So I guess this is two years old now. This must be so crappy now. Do I need any more spying? It already spies on me just fine. Okay. So <laughs> anyway, there you go, Twitty. So anyway, the, the, uh, the, uh, one of the features on, and I, let me just talk about the security features of an iPhone, for example. 
the the iPhone has a little security chip in here. It's called a uh, what is the security chip called? A six, something like that. I, I I can't remember exactly. It's an A and a number. Okay, and one of the features of this chip is it's a secure. They call it a secure enclave. A secure enclave, and what it is is, uh, let me just describe what it is so you understand what it is. Each phone. Each phone that gets delivered to you has a chip in there for this security process coprocessor. They call it a security coprocessor, which is this A6 or whatever it is. If somebody uh, corrects me later and says, it's not an A6, it's an A7, I don't fucking care. I'm just saying there's a chip called a, you know, a uh, security coprocessor with a, uh, a feature called Secure Enclave. And what it is, it has a flash, flash area in the, I believe they say it has two megabytes of flash uh, memory on the secure enclave that's on the phone. In the secure, uh, no, the Librem 5 is not out yet, but I pre-ordered. So the secure enclave on an iPhone uh, basically is rewritable flash. And one of the things it does is when it gets, uh, when, they, uh, when uh, you get an iPhone, it generates a unique key on the device. So there's many ways of doing that. Uh, simply by turning it on, it could generate the key, store it in the flash, and it becomes the permanent security key for the phone. It's going to be unique to the phone. Many, many ways of doing this, and I, I don't know the mechanics of how a secure enclave works, but uh, you know, if you uh, you can base it on time. So the moment you turn on the device, it can uh, take the time and use that to create a seed, and then create a uh, unique unique uh, uh, number and that becomes the secure portion of the phone that's not part of the security as you know when those terrorists start to uh, the terrorists in San Bernardino over here uh, they got the phone and they asked Apple to unlock the phone and uh, Apple said Zuck no we're not gonna do that we're not gonna reveal to you how to do that because then we we break the secure enclave and all this if we do that then we uh, if we write you special software to do that then we basically uh, um, uh, break security uh, for every single phone so they didn't do it so from a hardware point of view the secure enclave makes the phone lock up so the phone when when it's uh, when you don't put your pass key on no one can grab your phone and <clears throat> and break it so it would be very very difficult to break uh, virtually impossible uh, you know, with, because of the design of this secure enclave. That's also where they keep fingerprint data, which is actually not fingerprint. Uh, uh, in case you think the fingerprint data on iPhone is fingerprint, it's not. It's based on capacitance of your finger. It's like there's capacitors on the, uh, the little round, you know, I don't have that kind of phone, but on a, on a phone that has fingerprint, the little round button there is a capacitance measurement when your finger is on it, the grooves on your, your hand will lead a, uh, a different electrical value depending on what parts of your finger are, are exposed based on the fingerprint, okay? They don't actually capture your fingerprint. So if you're worried that somebody will, when you put your fingerprint on there and you're saying that somebody will send that fingerprint to the FBI, no, that device is actually a capacitance sensor. It doesn't send your fingerprint. It doesn't store your fingerprint. It stores a numeric value that has to do with the capacitance of your finger as it touches the device. So it's not something I would be worried about because it's not meaningful uh, since it's already been processed. You don't know what the source is. It's not meaningful data. We only know it's unique. Uh, we, we, we don't have any way of... of uh, using that to back into a fingerprint. You can't back into a fingerprint. Uh, uh, do you think that the uh, KI OS is more reliable than Apple? I don't know that particular OS, but is that a, uh, is that a uh, uh, Android uh, clone as well? We'll talk about that. Uh, if I have time, we'll talk about that as well. Uh, I'll try to squeeze in a few minutes of that. Okay. Um, and we'll talk about, you know, root kits and somebody was asking root kits and lineage OS and Android, Android uh, uh, forks and so on. We'll talk a little bit about that if I can. OK, now. Uh, so back to back to what I'm talking about the, with the uh, hardware switches. So your facial recognition is also based on numerical data. 
from the different points of your face that's count configured into a numerical value so that what they actually store on the uh, secure enclave on an iPhone is actually the numerical value of the computed thing about your face, not your actual face. So when it goes into when it goes into the uh, into uh, uh, the secure enclave, uh, you can't reverse that into a face. In theory, uh, at least that's my expectation, based on the design. So based on that, then I I wouldn't worry about the iPhone transmitting your facial recognition to Facebook because it does, that's not that kind of data. It's numerical, and because it's an end result, it's a a, a mathematically computed computed number. Uh, you don't know all the different pieces that got into the computation. And it's kept encrypted in the secure enclave. It is encrypted in the secure enclave. It's not, it doesn't leave the phone. It simply validates your face. So the security uh, uh, co-processor, this A6 thing that's on the iPhone, takes your face, matches it to the computed value on there, and says, oh yeah, that's you. Now, on that basis, if you're going to base it on that, is an iPhone more secure than a possible liber? Uh, li that's right, Twitty. Is it possible? Is, is it uh, is it going to be uh, uh, as secure? Uh, is an iPhone more secure, at least for this side of it, uh, than a Librem Five phone? I guarantee that an iPhone will probably be secure, more secure for that particular thing. If 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 somebody captures your device and tries to get into your phone. Yes, the fact the secure enclave will make the iPhone more secure for that purpose. Meaning no one can go into your phone physically and take your data and do things to your phone because they can't log in. That, I think, is a definite advantage of an iPhone. However, you're taking that with all the spy track that I just told you, the carry baseband, Wi-Fi triangulation, and other things that are being done on the phone that you don't know about. One of the things that, uh, just to give you an example of one of the things they can do on the phone that I didn't mention, is that there's now some, uh, some uh, um, software that can track your gyroscope on the device. So let's say you, you, they know your, your home. You know, they know where your home is. Then you put this thing in your pocket. Based on the gyroscope moving and how, you, how you've been traveling to where you're going, it will actually be able to predict your location based just on the gyroscope. The motion sensor. Can you believe that? So if they know from a known point where you are, the gyroscope movements will actually give out your location. That is part of the thing that is switched off on Librem 5. I mean, this is just nonstop. This is just nonstop. This goes on and on and on. There's just so many things that goes on here, not counting the camera and the microphone. And you should know that they can turn a speaker into a microphone. Okay, electrically that works. As a little kid, I knew that. I made a little, uh, you know, uh, intercom using speakers as microphones. As a kid, when I was like, I don't know, 10, I was building those things. Yeah, so you can use a, uh, a speaker as a microphone because it has a, you know, a uh, magnet on there. And if you vibrate, it's not, you know, not going to work on a condenser microphone, but it'll work on a typical speaker. Is this on Twitter? What is on Twitter? Nothing is on Twitter. This broadcast is on Periscope, though. So anyway, uh, so so back to uh, let, let me talk now about somebody saying that Android is safer. So Android uh, supposedly is safer from hacks. It's that somebody said on Reddit that it's the most secure phone because it's running something called uh, SE Linux. Okay. SE Linux is a module that uh, the National Zucking Agency created to make a more secure version of Linux. Apparently, that's been integrated into Android because Android is a Linux-based uh, operating system. 
So Android now has this SE Linux inside the code for Android. And because of that, somebody says, okay, the phone is now secure and you, it's harder to hack a, a Android. Okay, I get that. I get that. What the fuck does that have to do with privacy? What the Zuck that's having it run the most secure operating system on there, if the Zucking device is still doing Wi-Fi triangulation, if the Zucking device shares RAM with the Zucking baseband, who are you Zucking protecting? This is again the issue of cybersecurity versus privacy. Two separate points. If we're talking about uh, protecting the image of Google, yes, it's the most secure uh, product for protecting the image of Google as relates to spying on the, uh, as relates to hacking the device. But is hacking just the only concern? Why do you separate out the issue of privacy which impacts the little people? Cybersecurity in this case impacts Google. So this may be the most secure device for Google. It doesn't make it the most secure device for you. Let me repeat that again the most secure device hardware wise or software wise operating system wise is not necessarily the best secure device for you the average little people person all of us <clears throat> yes it's good for the corporate whatever that they can say well our phone is secure and you're supposed to feel better it's sucking disinformation if this thing is spying on me, what do I fucking care if this is uh, uh, secure or not? Let me just tell you something, just an example that shows you the nonsense here. Uh, you can you can load uh, uh, remote control software, legit remote control software, on one of these devices, an iPhone. It's on the fucking App Store. You pay them a couple hundred bucks a year, couple hundred bucks a year. As long as you have your password on this, uh, uh, which you can uh, figure out for your kids and so on, <clears throat> or family members, or if somebody shares their password with you, you can download this uh, software to put on the phone. Just pay for the uh, pay for the subscription to it, and you can now control this phone from anywhere. And when I mean control the phone, I mean turn it on. Turn on the camera. Full control of the phone. That is not protected by any of this. Secure Enclave, none of that matters as long as you know what the password is. <clears throat> you see, we, are, we, are, uh, we, we actually don't understand sometimes what the problem is. Uh, yeah. So... So, so if we, if you understand what, what, what I'm talking about, what the risks are, and, and you can see that I talk differently because cybersecurity is not the only issue and it doesn't even pertain to the rest of us. We need to worry about the privacy issue and a privacy issue is applicable to every single person where cybersecurity may not be the same thing. I already told you about corporate use of cybersecurity and how that's really used against you. A corporate entity will do cybersecurity at your expense. For example, they they want to protect their uh, corporate uh, data, so they put in a man-in-the-middle software from Blue Coat Systems into their site, so they can spy on your HTTPS traffic. They're protecting their cybersecurity, but they don't care about you losing your data. Does somebody in IT know what, what your bank account is and what your transactions are in a bank account and can see your password? Can see your password. They don't care about that. Corporation said, we don't care. Who the cares about your password? Any way to detect it? Yes, my man in the middle software. The one I have on the... Uh, Watch that video, and there's a link on the App Store for Catch MITM uh, on Android. It's not, it's not on iOS. On iOS, you use uh, Braxme, and you go to Settings, and there's an option there for, uh, for check, check for Man in the Middle. Okay? So Man in the Middle uh, is an example of a cybersecurity 
uh, thing. So if you're a security person working for the big company, you can say, oh yeah, we need this blue code systems. We need to know exactly what's going on on this network. We need to read everybody's data, including their Zaki passwords. So we know that if somebody is uh, trying to steal our data and send it over uh, and so on at your expense. I'm different guys. No Twitty, it can do it on anything that uses TLS. Any internet traffic that's encrypted using TLS. Any certificate based uh, uh, negotiation of security. Hello, Twin Mom. So, so, so that's uh, that's uh, uh, that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about when somebody says, "Is cybersecurity the same as privacy?" It is not. So. So these criticisms of a Librem 5 phone that relate to cybersecurity, it's nonsense, nonsense. When you ignore the privacy issues I'm talking about, who does not care if you have a secure enclave if the most basic thing is that this sucking thing is spying on every movement I make? And that you can read what's in RAM and that you can, uh, you can follow me around through Wi-Fi triangulation. What the suck are you talking about, sucking Reddit guy? What the suck are you talking about? You, this sucking Reddit guy must be a sucking shill for Google. So they're doing it for the benefit, yes, for the benefit of Google, yes. Uh, uh, Android is the most secure platform for Linux, the most secure Linux-based platform. Android is the most secure. It's like, Zuck you. How is Android secure for us? It, it's sucking not secure for you. Just like iOS is not secure for you. So I am excited to, you know, get this off my back. Get these things off my back. Now I got to use this for uh, Periscope. I got to use this for Periscope. So I'm stuck. I got to use this. But I'd like to leave this at home. I'd like to leave this at home. I, I don't want to be dependent on these. Okay. So I pre-ordered my Librem 5. Librem 5 uh, is uh, likely not going to please a lot of you. But given what I just told you about some of the issues relating to these products, and you can understand that they are zucked up. Now let me just tell you, uh, just uh, as an aside, because some of you asked this question and, and I have a few minutes to talk about it. Some of you are aware that there are other flavors of, of operating systems you can put on your phone, especially an Android phone. Streaming through your VPN. Uh, no, my, no I, I have a private uh, Twitty. Uh, I have a private connection to a server. The server is doing the streaming. I have a little different uh, method here. So I'm actually, the live stream is coming from Florida. And you all know I'm not in Florida. So the live streaming is coming from Florida. So to Apple, to uh, YouTube, and to uh, Twitch, and to, uh, to uh, uh, Periscope, I appear to be coming from Florida. So that's what will show up on their servers. And the transmission is, in fact, coming from Florida. But I'm not in Florida. So, so it's a much more complex chain. I'm pretty advanced. So there's things I can do that the average person cannot. I, I'm not using any third-party multi-streaming. I, I wrote this myself. So I have my own multi-streaming software on my own server that currently I'm the only one using. Okay. So I'm the only one doing this, and uh, for me, I'm not using any third-party product. So I wish I could do more, like put all of your comments on here from Periscope as well, but I am not able to do that. I cannot add comments from there, and I'm not really paying attention to Twitch as well. Uh, what provider do you use for your VPN? Randy, the best VPN on the planet, right there. Do you read, see that green sign there on the side? See that green sign on the back side there? The best VPN on the planet. And uh, for those of you who know this, I used to be, uh, I used to uh, uh, recommend 
PrivateInternetAccess.com, PIA. I was a big, I was a, I was a big promoter of PIA. Uh, and uh, don't use Zucking Nord VPN. I was like zucked up. You you want a slow spy spy network? Then use Nord. But PIA used to be so good, and then they zucked up and they just ruined it. They start blocking email. And they started doing, uh, you know. Um, uh, Re really stupid things. If you block email on a VPN, that's the first source of an IP address. So I was so mad. I was so mad. I said, stop this. And they have capture codes. And I mean, they put too many people on the same server. So, so, uh, so all the big players know exactly who the servers are from PIA and NordVPN and so on. And I got so tired of this. I said, Zuck you. So I made my own VPN. And, and this VPN has a 100% renewal rate. Everyone has been renewing. I don't do the automatic renewal that PIA does. Okay, no, no automatic renewal here. And this, uh, uh, strange enough, has 100% renewal rate. Why is that? Because it's good. It's good. Uh, one, nobody actually knows you're in a VPN. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't create a signal. I made it so it doesn't create a signal as a VPN. There's so few people on each server that it, they don't uh, they don't detect that. Yeah, you, you know, PIA and all these NordVPN and all these guys, they put this large servers and they put thousands of people, thousands and thousands of people on one server. Signal dropping there. Okay, hold on, hold on. Signal dropped. Signal drop. Okay, are we are we okay now? Looks like a power surge. Okay, so there was a brief uh, outage there on the uh, brief outage there. But well, looks like we're okay, right? Can people confirm on on all? Hello, Joe. Okay, so uh, everyone uh, good here? Okay, I just want to confirm that everyone uh, everyone's good. Okay. Okay, because I just I was talking in the middle of my, my sentence and it disconnected. Sucked up. So 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 some of you will say, well, um, I don't want to buy a new phone. What if I load a new OS to an Android phone? So some of you are asking me to do a review on lineage lineage OS. So yes, you can you can uh, load. You can root your Android and install uh, Linux OS as an example. In fact, uh, I can load it. I have several Androids. And uh, I can install Linux OS on it. And cool. Yes, you can install other OSs on there. And some of you mentioned some other OSs. Uh, I, I would advise you not to think about the old, old, like, uh, you know, Nokia phones and such because they're not they're not going to work on 4G or uh, even some versions of 3G so the old Nokia phones are you know any 2G phone is done uh, 3G phones have a short lifespan a few years but uh, if they're not 4G then they're going to have a lifespan okay so given this given this uh, issue you really don't need to care about the old phones <laughs> Uh, older than a BlackBerry, so BlackBerry is still good. Will last for a while. There's some newer versions of, of BlackBerry, but I, I, uh, uh, like I'm by newer I mean 2013. But do not get a new BlackBerry. The new Blackberries are actually, f uh, uh, from a Chinese company. Uh, forget the initials. It begins with T. So the new phones are from a Chinese company. They're not BlackBerry itself doesn't make phones anymore. They're just using the name. So the BlackBerry phones are actually made by a Chinese company. And they're Android. Don't use that. They're zucking Androids. So Lineage OS, as an example, and there are many of these varieties. There are even varieties of Lineage OS. Lineage OS is basically a fork of Android. It looks like Android and acts like Android. Now, given that... Uh, you ought to ask yourself, why do I need to do Lineage OS? I believe the one I got was uh, 2011 uh, in Lighten Up. 
I think the BlackBerry Bolt 9900 is from 2011. And I believe you can get the Z30. That, I believe, may have been 2013. That may be the last one you're going to use. And even that, I'm not sure about. Meaning, I'm not sure if that's a good operating system. Because that uses the BlackBerry 10. It's a, it's a different OS than the one on the the uh, BlackBerry Bolt. So I prefer the operating system on the BlackBerry Bolt for security purposes. The BlackBerry 10, the, the one that's uh, from 2013, uh, is will, will be better for some of you because it has a touch screen. It doesn't have that built-in keyboard. But it's likely not as secure as uh, the BlackBerry Bolt 9900. So I prefer that. Okay, and there's another one called Passport. So, so if you're just using, you know, if you want to just use a phone for a phone and put all of your other apps on a tablet, then the BlackBerry Bold is for you. If, if you want to do everything on the phone and trying to do it in a more secure way, I would say think about, think about a Librem 5 as a possibility because at least you can do web stuff on it and it's actually a full computer. A Librem 5 is actually a computer. Uh, a Librem 5 is actually a desktop PC with a... I mean, I, that's why it fascinates me because there's other things I can do with that. It's an actual computer. Like a Raspberry Pi is a computer. A Librem 5 is like a high-speed Raspberry Pi with touch interface, all built in. So so that's why it's uh, it's fascinating. You, you can do more things with this. This will last more years than you, you think because there's other things. I mean, you can use it as a desktop PC. Put a keyboard and a monitor to it. It's actually a PC. So, uh, you know, compared to the other one. So, based on some of these comments, the, the question is, do you really want Lineage OS and all this? What is the advantage of using Lineage OS other than the fact that there are some appearance things that, you know, maybe you like the appearance of lineage os although it looks pretty much like uh like android sometimes you want a new os because your device is so old that they don't upgrade the os on it so you're on an old version of android and you want to find a way to load a new version of android so you load something like lineage os on it or some other fork now uh yes uh enlighten up i i have you will always be able to use a phone and lighten up and you can buy it used for under 50 bucks. You can buy it for under 50 bucks. So, you know, so it gives you a way to have a phone and texting uh, with its own SIM card. Anyway, so what's the advantage of using Lineage phone other than what I just said, meaning uh, being able to update the operating system uh, on a device that no longer gets the Android update? So, uh, because if you load Lineage OS, you'll get the newest Android on it. So other than that, what's the advantage? Is there any security advantage, privacy advantage? Uh, uh, minimal, if any. Uh, does it still spy on you? Zuck, yeah. Does it stop Wi-Fi triangulation? Zuck, no. Is the baseband still connected to the RAM? Zuck, yes. That has nothing to do with the, with the, uh, the BIOS. You are sucked. Okay, so uh, all of you are asking me all these new OSs. Now, what exactly changes with all these new OSs? Now, the the specific thing about the Android is that how it reports the location data to to Google, which is in the Android operating system itself. You'll watch this later. Later, okay, you should. It's important, right? But the tracking software. It's still there. What about the Galaxy Note 8? What did I just say? What did I just say? If it's Android, if it's iOS, then it will suck you up. It's very obvious, okay? Go watch the replay if you don't understand what I just said. If, you, if you're on Android and iOS, in an Android and iOS device, you can't help it. The device, the hardware itself is built to spy on you. The software is there to take that data they spied on you and send it to Apple and Google. 
Okay, the only way out of it is to use a device that does not have the ability to spy on you. And those devices are the old flip phones, the old Blackberries, and the new Librem 5. I'm not even sure the new Linux phone, the new Linux phone that, uh, called Pine Phone, I'm not sure that will have any kind of security of the stuff I'm talking about. I'm not sure it will have protection for, for the, you know, the, uh, uh, you know, baseband sharing RAM or a separate chip for, uh, for the Wi-Fi. It probably doesn't because they're trying to save money. So don't assume that a, a Pine phone is the same as a Librem 5. I don't think so. I don't think so. Of course, the cam the camera is always spying and you, uh, uh, you, uh, and if you load certain software, then it can be controlled. The Librem 5 is an example of a phone that has a hardware switch. So when you don't want to use the, the camera, then turn the switch off and there's no way somebody can turn it on since it's a hardware switch. So these hardware switches are the only solutions to the things. Librem 5 is the only device I know of that is even thinking about any of this. And some people are saying the Librem 5 is not as secure. And it's like, um, my, my answer is, Zuck you. You know, who else is doing anything that relates to privacy? It's not just sucking cybersecurity. I keep repeating that. It's not about cybersecurity alone. It's about privacy. Who cares if you have the most cybersecure device, but you're spying on the people who own the phone? What, uh, what benefit is that to me? So for privacy, uh, uh, so for privacy uh, uh, oriented people, you may not like it, Twitty. You may want to wait for me to get it first. Well, you could probably afford it anyway. That's for storing my phone. Uh, uh, that doesn't, that's restarting my phone, alter your location. No, no. It probably sends all of your locations up to the point of restarting. Uh, always on VPN firewall, no server connections. Uh, because of fingerprinting, you are never 100% secure. Uh, I, you don't need Cloudflare, Cloudflare encrypted DNS. Uh, if you're using my VPN, it automatically uh, secures the DNS for you. You already ordered the Librem 5. So don't come to me and complain if it doesn't work as, as well. Twitty, I mean, you know, you're taking a risk here, but uh, I'm not telling you to buy it. I, I'm telling you why I like it, and I'm going to review it for you, and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, we'll see how it goes. Now, uh, even a secure phone can't stop people from exhibiting on insecure behavior. Mad Cow is absolutely right. So I'll give you an example. So you think, well, I have a secure phone. I have a, you know. Librem 5, which is, you know, it's only as secure as, as, uh, as you use it. If somebody actually captures the phone, uh, it's not going to be as secure uh, as an iPhone. Because if you capture an iPhone, then uh, uh, it locks up the data. But most of us don't keep much data on the phone anyway. We send it on the cloud. And therefore, your data is in the cloud anyway. So what are we securing from? We just want them to spy on us so that, you know, they don't know what our locations are and what we do. But uh, if we don't uh, use the proper device, they're tracking all that and recording it, and, and it really bugs me. If uh, I'll frame it even if I, I heard about it not only from you. Okay. <laughs> when does the Librem 5 come out? Uh, they said third quarter, so I guess that gives them until September 30. Third quarter. They haven't changed the date, so... Third quarter, so they, they should, you know, they need to start manufacturing pretty soon if they're going to try to make it to, to uh, September 30. So we shall see. I presume, that, you know, there'll be lots of issues. I presume there'll be going to be lots of issues, but again, you can plug in a keyboard and monitor. It's an actual PC. If, an, if it's a PC and it's a Linux PC, I can even do programming on it. Can you imagine this? Uh, you know, I bring a, I bring a Librem 5 and I, you know, I need to do some programming, uh, and I need to access my servers and do some programming, uh, easy. 
I put a put a keyboard on it. Maybe uh, put some uh, microscopic, uh, you know, sunglasses uh, uh, glasses so I can see the small text, and then uh, I'm good to go. I can program on that. Put it on uh, horizontal uh, landscape mode and uh, magnifying glass, and I should be able to program. So I'm. Uh, uh, so it'll be useful to me regardless. Even if with its flaws, it's going to be use be useful for me. It's just Linux. Is using the cloud a wise choice? I use the cloud. Uh, uh, never know how to call you here. Head. How do I pronounce your name? Sosa Marquez. How, how do I pronounce your name? Mr. Marquez. So Mr. Marquez. Uh, I use the cloud. I use Braxtad.me. Braxtad.me is secure cloud. I store all my stuff in Braxtad.me. And I don't worry about it because it's encrypted. Certainly Amazon is going to read my files, so I don't I don't have to worry about anything. I store all my stuff on Amazon, on my on uh, on my uh, Braxtami platform. Choose your own black uh, platform. If you uh, there's a paid service called P Cloud. You want to pay them? They can encrypt it for you. I think the encryption costs extra. So if you want to use that, that's that's one. Um, uh, you know, choose an encrypted cloud option, and uh, but mine is encrypted. It's encrypted at rest, encrypted in transmission, and uh, uh, so I'm not going to be worried about my data. Uh, no one has ever lost data on racks on me, so so I'm not worried about that. Uh, if if the Librem Five is being made in China, could it be a challenge for Purim to sell it current prices without increasing price to offset new tariffs? Uh, I think I would assume that the uh, <coughs> uh, I would assume that the tariffs are already uh, uh, accounted for. I, you know, I that these device. Uh, let me demo this device again for you. So I made a security device that I'm going to be selling, and this security device, uh, frankly, uh, probably all the parts are from China. You know, because I buy the parts from Amazon and and. Frankly, I think everything that is in here is from China because it's the cheapest place to get it. So the price is the price, whatever, even tariffs. So it seems to be okay. You know, I'm not seeing any increases that really make any kind of difference. So uh, so at least as raw materials go, I'm not seeing any, any actual price change. So a lot of that stuff is maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, it's uh, it's not. It's disinformation. I'm not. I I haven't. Re you know. Maybe it's only for finished products. I I don't, haven't really seen any effect on the things that I'm buying. So the parts that I'm buying have been the same for the last few months. So nothing has changed. So so uh, now Librem Five being a finished product that may be different because I'm I'm not. I'm buying raw materials. So uh, so. The price already increased from six fifty to seven hundred. No, that was planned, Mad Cow. That was planned. Uh, uh, Librem Five is manufactured in China. Yes, will be manufactured in China. That that's that's known. Is it like iPhones are manufactured in China? It's the cheapest place to make it. <clears throat> so it will be manufactured in China, but it's uh, it, the uh, the. Uh, Everything is actually uh, figured out by by uh, purism. Okay, so anyway, uh, maybe tomorrow I'll talk about Stingray again and explain that in more detail so you understand the implications of Stingray. In the meantime, I want to demo this again, this product that I'm working on, and I'll be uh, hopefully be selling this uh, by the time of the holidays. And this is part of a security system I have which has a camera. I don't have the camera here. It's, uh, I, I, I have one working unit. It's, uh, it's actually working right now, giving me security. It's working very, very well. And uh, just to give you an example, that's an example of, uh, of uh, what it's giving me as data. Uh, I just did a screenshot and uh, that's the actual video and you can actually play the video right there. 
uh, on your phone. So, so that's, uh, and you can see one that's in red, that is an alarm, and I'll show you what that alarm is, but just video and alarm uh, combination so far. It's what I have made so far. So I'm gonna show you how this works. Uh, am I able to transfer files from phone to phone via Bluetooth with privacy, particularly if one phone is out of service? Uh, Bluetooth is a very slow way of doing that. Uh, the, uh, the Librem 5 uses a micro SD card, so you can plug in a micro SD card and transfer it to another computer. It's just Linux, so you can transfer it to a desktop. It should transfer all the files because it's just a micro SD. Okay? Okay, now I'm going to show you this. Uh, okay, okay, Twitty, see you later. I'm going to demonstrate this product again for you. This is uh, this is my security product that I uh, that I I made, and I want to get your input on it and see if you like it or not like it, or you think nobody will buy this. Okay, so uh, I'm going to walk out the door, and all I have to do is go press the button. So you heard the beep, okay? Now it's gonna go on a timer, and this thing is gonna, uh, this thing is uh, going to uh, give me time to get out of the house. You, you heard, hear the beep, and it uh, will give me uh, 30 seconds to uh, to uh, walk out of the house. That's configurable, and it's about to turn on here in a moment. And listen in. Okay, so got a few more seconds here, I think. Okay, I have to stop moving soon. The alarm's gonna start and I can't move. Alarm is active now. Alarm, police alert. Okay, you see how that works? And that sh sent me a notification uh it shows up right there that red thing in there and uh and then i'm able to to immediately get it you can't stop it once the alarm goes th it gets on your phone so even if a thief said i'm gonna go unplug that thing first of all you can hide it uh i'm gonna unplug that thing and you can go in silent mode so it doesn't beep and uh and uh and then uh it's so simple. This is such a simple, secure. I, I can make it say anything. It said police alert. Yes, you can say anything. You can say you're socked. I'm gonna get you. Uh, you know. You know. Maybe you supplement it with this. Maybe you need to supplement it with this. This and the alarm system. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so this is. Uh, I'm gonna keep it on again. Uh, uh, this may be around. And I, I'm guessing here. Don't don't hold me to it. But I, I'm shooting for like 99 bucks. 99 bucks for this. So this will be like self self. Uh, it goes to uh, goes to the uh, goes to the uh, uh, cloud on your phone. It and I have a sophisticated camera system with it. So the camera system is more expensive. Uh, the camera system is going to be more expensive. Because you know uh, it has a lot of uh, a lot of fancy features, so the camera is very pro. So uh, uh, okay, it's about to start here. So I don't want to be talking while this alarm goes on here. active now you can see the red light I'm trying not to move this is radar based this device is based on radar it's not it's not based on infrared so uh, if the radar detects any kind of big movement then it sets the alarm Alarm. Police alert. Okay, and that has a fairly big range. Uh, I believe it can cover, I, I'm guessing uh, it can cover 400 square feet pretty easily. 
Okay. Holy cow, how did know you move uh, what so fast? Uh, it actually, there's a short delay, and the reason for the short delay before it actually sets the alarm is because it makes sure before it alarms, it sends all the data to the internet, to your device, to your phone. It sends a notification first, sends all, there's some transmissions it does too. Uh, uh, no, it doesn't send an alert to the cops. You have to call the police. <laughs> That's a service. I'm not offering that service. No, you have to call the police. So, uh, holy cow, how did it know? You? Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, if you subscribe to a, a uh, security service like I do, like uh, ADT, uh, 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 snake oil sale, there you go, Camara Jeff. So, so uh, uh, if you subscribe to, uh, to uh, ADT, like, you know, like I have for a long, long time, uh, it was one of the the big the biggest uh, security companies. What they you do is you pay them forty bucks a month, and then uh, if there's an alarm, then they call you, and then you have to confirm with your code that it's not an alarm, uh, and then they call the police. So it's like, Zach, if you're gonna do that, I can just call the police myself. I just won't need to have the alarm alert even when I'm not home. Then I can call the police. So there. You get the alarm, it goes on your phone, and you can decide to call the police or not. Okay? <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's uh, you don't need to pay anything. There's no monthly fees, nothing you have to worry about. It's very simple, inexpensive uh, solution for security, and this can cover your entire house. Uh, and maybe an extra sensor. I'm thinking about two of them. You know, uh, it's enough to cover, uh, you know, yeah, it's so... If, if, if you have a many entrances to one side, put another one on the other side, and that should cover the whole house with two of these uh, or uh, this in a sensor for a fairly inexpensive price. So plus a security camera on the outside. So then if you're on your phone and you say, well, what happened? What triggered that? And then you can see, oh, yeah, I can look outside and see the video. This is actual video. So it shows any kind of motion detected and will show you what happened and who came in uh, so that's so uh, one of the products I'm uh, working on and I don't know if people like this you tell me Camara Jeff hates it uh, any anyone interested in this do you think this is cool thank you mr. Marquez what is what this is Wi-Fi yes <laughs> this Camara Jeff is like uh, you know, always, uh, always complaining because he he thinks uh, he thinks uh, he understands how it all works. Like it, yeah. So, so you know, uh, this may be a Christmas present for you guys. The radar can sense movement through walls. It uh, this is the fascinating part of this. The radar can actually go through wall. So I've tested this behind the door. I have tested it. If you put it next to the door, it can actually, I've tested this behind the door. I've actually sensed somebody approaching the door. So they, before they even get into the house, the alarm already triggered. What's your opinion on Synas cloud and surveillance capabilities? See, I don't know who uh, Synology is, but uh, the problem is a lot of these products, a lot of these products, uh, that are security, uh, so supposedly for your security, and it's not, uh, thank you, Daryl, a lot of these products, supposedly for your security, are not actually made by cybersecurity experts. So, they're, so uh, thank you, Daryl, so they're actually easily hacked. As you know, I'm, I'm a cybersecurity expert, so I want to make sure that there is no access to these devices from the Internet. You cannot act, these have no Internet connections. I mean, they're connected to the Internet, you cannot access them from the internet. You cannot control the devices from the internet. So you can see what they're doing from the internet, uh, if you know, on your BraxMe account, but you cannot uh, you cannot uh, uh, watch cameras or do anything like that. So that's uh, that's uh, you know the kind of thing that I'm aware of that a lot of these companies are not. So so. 
uh, oops, they are accessible from the internet. Yes. So most of these products, uh, you know, they, they do what is called port forwarding. Uh, when I, uh, when I was using spectrum, so I've changed all my security products to mine now. Um, uh, mine is in the front of the house star power and it's, uh, uh, powered by, uh, power over ethernet POE. And uh, that is wired to the Ethernet using a power line. And I really suggest a very high speed connection to the Internet for your camera. The reason is the video. It's high speed video, high HD. So because of the high speed, you don't want it to be in Wi-Fi. It can be in Wi-Fi if the Wi-Fi is close by. But, but uh, uh, it has to be a very, very close by Wi-Fi. If the Wi-Fi is kind of far, then I would rather that you just put it in as wired <clears throat> so 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 again this is an example and it's it is HD quality HD quality video so in case you're wondering so very very good resolution <clears throat> hello nerdy art okay so anyway that's uh, uh, th they should uh, they should be push only push only uh, so anyway, this this is the let me do, before I leave you tonight. I'm gonna do one more demonstration. I'm gonna do one more demonstration of this. And again, it you don't have to punch in a code to uh, to at the moment. I'm thinking you don't have to punch in a code to disable it because it's not really calling the police anyway. It's calling you, and then you decide to call the police. Okay. So to set this alarm, and I've tested already uh, even the day as I was using it. Uh, I leave the house. I just press the button like this. Let's just listen to the beeps. Okay, that turns it on. And it doesn't immediately activate. It gives you about about uh, uh, some amount of time. And in my case, it's uh, 40 seconds. So it's 40 seconds before, be so I can, you know, prepare to walk out of the house, close the door and all that. And then uh, when it goes to the third beep, it will be 30 seconds and then it, uh, it, it doesn't actually fire up. It gives you a little bit of rest time for the sensor. So now it'll be 10 seconds from here and then it will stop and I have to stop moving. So here, I'm gonna stop moving. Alarm is active now. Okay, I have this connected to a speaker so you can hear the device. Alarm. Police alert. Okay, so that's how that works. And that sends the notification, like here, shows up on my phone. So I did the software too, and there's a, I may make a separate app right now, it's on Braxme, but I probably can separate the app there, uh, so it's a little simpler. <coughs> so that's uh, that's part of it, that's, uh, that's one of the products I'm gonna have. Uh, together with the security camera. Okay, so uh, really, really simple and expensive. There's a similar product that kinda, kinda I, I, this, is, this is much, much simpler and, uh, and uh, fancier uh, because it uses uh, radar uh, and it's a bigger range than the one from another company called Simply Safe. Simply Safe have been trying to sell me their security system for, f you know, since Christmas time when I looked at their product, they, they were like selling me same. And, and then I, I looked at all the deficiencies of these products. Simply Safe only handles indoors. Well, I don't want a system that only handles indoors. I want a system that handles indoor and outdoors. And then you got Ring that handles your door. And then it spies on you and sends your picture to Zucking Amazon. Okay? I, I mean, you know, and it's attached to Amazon Echo. So they listen into your conversations as well and see your photos. I mean, this is all like dangerous little products here. Then there's Google Nest, and you know what Google does? So this is not a mysterious thing. So I said, enough of this. Let's set a privacy based security system. And that's what I'm doing here privacy based security system. So this is just some of my products uh, that um, I'm going to have. It's not available yet. Uh, it doesn't affect, this is microwave, it does, doesn't, uh, it's not affected by, a uh, wise is uh, the cheap one that's camera only indoor. Uh, again, you know, the motion on wise is based on, on uh, lens, uh, 
camera movement. So in the dark, it's not going to sense. It's not going to sense in the dark. This does not require lighting. It works in uh, total darkness. It doesn't. It's radar. It will work in the dark. Uh, the, well, Ring is already uh, Ring is already uh, owned by Amazon. So I'm I'm competing with some big players in here. But the thing is, uh, you know, there's a niche here for people who are concerned about privacy because these are privacy-based products. And uh, and because I understand how these work, so I made this, and I made it for a very very specific purpose. This is actually pretty neat because there's actually a uh, transmitter here and receiver to actually control home automation. I could actually turn on the lights automatically in your house. I can automatically turn on the lights in your house as the alarm goes on. There are other things that I can do here. Uh, sell their own made uh, any products and helping people sell their own made data. <laughs> uh, I wish I could make money from that. So uh, then I would do it. So anyway, hopefully, uh, hopefully you're appreciating what I'm trying to do here. Uh, support the program, guys. Uh, you know, uh, support. The, we have a VPN for you. Uh, people need some kind of authentication, trigger relay, and dump cameras when they come home. People need to hit, uh, no need, Lucifer Sam, because there's actually no, nothing, it doesn't actually call the police. So uh, the reason for the turning off an alarm, you know, with a punch code, the reason for that is that it will call the actual uh, security company and the police. This time it calls you. So if the alarm fires, nothing happens, you know, because you know it. So it's not going to, you know, it, 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 you don't need any of that. It just simplifies everything. Okay? Thank you. For the little guys. Thank you, Mr. Ren. I don't know how to pronounce your name, my friend. I don't read Chinese. So uh, I have to watch the replay. Okay. So hopefully you see that. And tomorrow I'd like to talk about, there's so much I want to talk about. And, uh, you know, some, sometimes uh, some of the topics I want to talk about is, is not popular and and uh, and uh, I hesitate to spend too much time talking about it just because I don't get the views but it's so important one of them I really want to talk about is Intel management engine the back door on your PC and I don't want to talk about that that's, you know that's something that I've talked about for years and and a lot of you do still don't understand what that means you know uh, Intel Management Engine, VPro, VPro, AMT. Yes, Star Power. I think uh, this is my, my plan. This is my plan. IME is so evil, you don't even know. Uh, this computer does not have VPro on it. So you have to check the chip on the Intel site to make sure it doesn't have VPro. IME. Okay. Uh, my, my plan, uh, my plan, by the way, is, uh, to, to, uh, uh, sell a set of products for the security. You can buy them individually, but I'm thinking of selling it as a set. Uh, one of these, and then a portable sensor, battery operated that we can, that you can put in another part of a house. And then the camera outside. And if you have those three, I think you have a pretty good, uh, overall security now as you add more of these devices then you get good perimeter security because this is the radar if you have a lot of these radar ones and they can be battery operated if you can put the radar outdoors let's say solar powered versions of this then now you have a perimeter alarm because this thing will fire outdoors within like uh, 15 meters it senses you know approaching it within 15 meters, this thing will fire. So, uh, this does not need lighting. The this, the uh, radar sensor is not lighting. Uh, uh, for lighting, star power, I use uh, uh, multiple uh, infrared, infrared illuminators. I have several outside. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a breadboard. Yeah, can you see that?
So that's what you're looking at. It's hard to see, I know, but there. You can't see all the wires, but uh, this is a 3B plus. 3B plus. Uh, when it's going to be available? Um, uh, this one. Well, I'm trying to get the all the products available, you know, starting in uh, October, maybe. Probably, we'll time it to the Librem 5. Hello, Lenny PR. We'll time it to the uh, uh, Librem 5. The Raspberry Pi's SBCs have spying hardware. Uh, uh, the... Uh, the the uh, Raspberry Pis are designed uh, by the Raspberry folks in uh, the UK, so I don't believe they have any spying hardware. So, yeah, no, I don't believe so. Besides, there are like millions and millions of these. I I don't know. How, they must have sold like a uh, hundred million of these Raspberry Pis by now. So. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna you know somebody would for cheap they can open it up and see if there's anything unusual on here and all the chips are all well-known chips. So on a Raspberry Pi, it's all commercial chips on here. So there, none of them are. There are no strange chips on there. So uh, I went to Costco this week and they are selling stuff for Halloween first, then Walgreens. <laughs> okay, already. Uh, so anyway, so, um, support the, uh, the program guys. A lot of these, what I do is, uh, you know, for you and I understand the, uh, the issues with privacy and I'm one of the few people to speak out and even creating products to, to help defend ourselves, uh, against privacy. And I promote the companies also that support privacy like Librem five. So, uh, we can talk also about their computer which is the uh, Librem uh, 13 and 15, I believe. And uh, and we can talk about that and uh, if those are good or not. There's actual alternatives to those. So I don't have a Librem laptop and I don't think I, I necessarily want theirs. But uh, uh, they're trying to do the same thing with the hardware switches on the, the, the laptop. So they, they, they're running into the same uh, desire to make the same changes on the laptops because of uh, uh, Intel Management Engine, okay, uh, AMT V Pro. Okay, that's why I want to talk about that. Should there be a term for working on increased internet privacy like going dark or stealth mode? What is the mask for, dude? My goodness, if you don't know the anonymous mask, why don't you search anonymous? Flat, is that flat water or hot? Uh, it's flat earth now, it's flat water. Um, yeah, if you don't, Google Anonymous. Go to YouTube and go watch Anonymous. Come on. Do I need to tell you what Anonymous is? Okay, so anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll, uh, we'll convene tomorrow and uh, maybe talk about, uh, maybe talk about uh, how your phones are invaded by Stingray. Stingray tomorrow, okay? You need to uh, a mass to join the club. Okay, Stingray tomorrow. Uh, some people from Anonymous are in our broadcast. Just FYI. My broadcast is always, uh, my broadcast is always uh, filled with people from Anonymous. They're, they're here. They're here. So I know that. I know them. They're here, okay? Now, we don't really know who they are in real life, but they're here. Okay, guys. So, uh, go watch my videos on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jericho. Glad to see you. And uh, see you.